Creative Babble. Start your wellness journey at Whole Foods Market, where it's jumpstart January through the 16th. Stock up on supplements with some of the year's biggest savings. Plus, save on air chilled organic boneless skinless chicken breast, organic honey crisp apples, organic large Haas avocados, and more. And since Whole Foods Market is the only certified organic national grocer, it's easy to make them your wellness destination. Jumpstart your January now at Whole Foods Market. It's safe to assume that most pretend episodes are not suitable for young children. Unfortunately, this is one of those episodes. In fact, trigger warning, we're going to talk about sexual assault and suicide today. This episode's actually pretty disgusting. So if you have the stomach for it, please proceed. You have been warned. The last episode about sovereign citizens was just exposition for what you're about to hear today. I first learned about this story from my friend Jerry Williams, who hosts a podcast called FBI Retired Case File Review. And if you haven't listened to it, you're missing out. Her episode on this topic haunted me for days after I heard it. So I asked Jerry Williams if I can share this story with you. So if you thought the last Sovereign Citizens episode was shocking, wait till you hear this. I'm Javier Leva, and this is Pretend. Stories about real people pretending to be someone else. Start your wellness journey at Whole Foods Market, where it's jumpstart January through the 16th. Stock up on supplements with some of the year's biggest savings. Plus, save on air-chilled organic boneless skinless chicken breast, organic honey crisp apples, organic large Haas avocados, and more. And since Whole Foods Market is the only certified organic national grocer, it's easy to make them your wellness destination. Jumpstart your January now at Whole Foods Market. So, we're here today with Rick, who is going to perform a sack removal. This is home video of Rick Van Thiel getting ready to remove a cyst from someone's back in a filthy, single-wide trailer. So, Rick, are you a surgeon? No, but I, I played one once in a, a movie for tailor-made clips. Oh! <gasps> That's right. Rick Van Thiel has zero medical experience. So, is this your first sack removal? Yep, this is the first one. Are you excited? I think it should be fun. And where did you learn to remove a sack? On YouTube, of course. God, it's amazing what you can yeah, learn. Yeah, you you'd be amazed what you can learn on YouTube. You could get an education off of YouTube. Rick is not a surgeon. In fact, he comes from a totally different line of work. I noticed that you are dressed. So, I decided this time that I am not only going to do it without a shirt, but I'm going to do it without pants either. Woohoo! Get naked! What do you mean? Rick Van Thiel is a porn star, an inventor a modern-day renaissance man, in his own mind, of course. He also subscribes to sovereign citizen beliefs. Remember from the last episode? Sovereign citizens don't recognize the United States as a legitimate government. They don't trust cops, lawyers, judges, most politicians, and they sure as hell don't trust doctors. So where do sovereign citizens go when they need medical attention? Well, they go see guys like Rick Van Thiel. Let's play more of the video of Rick Van Thiel prepping to remove a cyst from a guy's back in his nasty ass trailer. What do you mean? Like, he, it's got a, a, it, you've got a small bump? Touch it, touch it. Right now, Rick Van Thiel is fully nude, and the camera is zoomed in on the patient's back. Does it like move like it did? Mm. Oh, shut yeah, up, it moves around like it's a sack for sure. Just keep your mouth shut. The man has a cyst under his skin about the size of a grape. Breathe in through your nose I feel and like, out through your no, mouth. No, no, I fucking feel something. I know, Breathe it was the sack. Breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. Oh, 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 oh. I know, hold steady. Oh, 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 oh. 
fuck? Ow. I contacted a reporter who interviewed Rick Van Thiel to talk about this operation. His name is Sergio Avila. One, you see this trailer and it looks Filthy. awful. Filthy. Yeah, it's just, so, there's like stuff everywhere. You have this poor guy laying shirtless on a table and, and they're making jokes about how, oh yeah, I saw this on YouTube. Don't worry, I got you. How do you remove a sack, Dr. Rick? And I was like, oh yeah, I learned it on YouTube. And, and there's this guy laying on this table, shirtless. And you can tell that even him, he's, he's laughing and joking. And it's not until that scalpel hits his skin and starts digging in there that you could tell his reality kind of hit him. Ow! Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm not trying to hurt you here. No, I know you're not, but I fucking know when it hurts. And he starts screaming in pain. And he got his scalpel and he oh my God. started slicing into this man's back. The guy starts screaming. I got to tell you, it's <laughs> hard to watch. I, it I is. Oh, my I God. I had to look yeah. away and... I mean, I guess I am pretty squeamish, but man, I think anybody, even with a strong stomach, would have a hard time seeing this guy without any anesthesia getting sliced open. Yeah, he's he's laying there in his jeans, like there's blood getting on the back of his jeans, and you know, after a while, it just patches him out. Okay, you're good to go. But he <laughs> actually took out some sort of sack that was in oh yeah under this guy's skin. Is that the sack? That's the sack. part of it. Yeah, is that the whole thing? That's the sack. Ew. That's the sack right there. That's all of it. Uh -huh. Oh, that's sweet. That should be the whole thing right there. Say it, Rick. Say it. <laughs> you are so funny. To think that somebody would put that kind of trust in a random person who's in a disgusting trailer, you know, that's beyond me. And in the video, the camera zooms in on the incision. It's about a one inch long slit. It definitely needs stitches. It's a serious See that? Shit. See that hole? Okay. Can I'm getting a close-up of that hole. See that? Yeah. Okay, that's what we got to try to bandage up now. So what does our homeopathic doctor do? He puts a bandage on it and calls it a day. No stitches. Unbelievable. We used ozonated water this time because I'm out of colloidal silver. Colloidal silver, if you remember, is the same miracle drug that snake oil salesmen like televangelist Jim Baker claims cures COVID-19 and other bacterial and viral infections. But who am I to talk? I know nothing about medicine. Rick Van Thiel, on the other hand, has the best medical training money can buy. How did he learn how to do these surgeries? Yeah, I, I asked him in, in that video. He says, yeah, I learned this on YouTube. And I asked him directly. I was like, what do you mean you learned this on YouTube? And he said, well, you don't just watch one video. You watch, you know, a lot of videos, 20, 20 to 30 videos, and you can pretty much learn anything on YouTube for free. And you know what? Yeah, you can't. Honestly, you can't. You can't. You know, Which I've, is true. I've done some car stuff. Yeah. yeah, I've done some car stuff. I've done some home improvements in my home, and I've watched YouTube videos to get an idea of how to do it. But I'll tell you one thing. I'm not going to learn how to cut somebody's back open and remove a cyst. Apparently, practicing medicine without a license is not only dangerous, it's also illegal. But Rick Van Thiel doesn't give a crap about our laws. He's a sovereign citizen, remember? Eventually, his nonsense medical procedures caught the attention of the FBI and the medical board. Here's former FBI agent Brianna Fox, who worked on this case. Well, Rick's confidence in himself was seemingly endless again as he was learning and thinking, oh, well, if I can remove a cyst, I can remove a heart, you know, and as he was progressing that he was planning to do open heart surgery, he felt totally confident in himself from just watching YouTube videos, he would be able to do that. The odds of anybody surviving that were near zero. So as soon as Rick attempted that, we were going to start having homicides on our hands. So we've made skin incision. We've divided the breastbone, that's called the sternotomy. And we're opened up the wrapping around the heart called the pericardium. And here you can see a large aortic aneurysm measuring more than five centimeters. I watched a handful of open heart surgery videos on YouTube, and I have to say, I still don't know how to perform heart surgery. Maybe it's because I'm fully dressed. So this is where I'm starting to come into the picture. It was a relatively new agent assigned out to the Las Vegas field office. This is Brianna Fox, 
She has no idea that one of her first major FBI cases would be the grossest in her career. And we were getting reports, not to the FBI, but to our local law enforcement partners, that there is somebody who was seeing patients, in air quotes, in his trailer. There was talk that he was practicing medicine without a license, that he was doing things that were actually very harmful. They wanted us to look into it. But this wasn't a surprise to law enforcement. Rick Van Thiel was already on the FBI's radar. Because there were saying he wanted to kill law enforcement and already had it on his record that he had tried to do something like this. Rick Van Thiel was loosely involved in a plot to kidnap, torture, and murder a Las Vegas police officer. According to some reports, Rick led a sovereign citizen support group where like-minded folks hashed out all sorts of crazy anti-government ideas. They would also sit around and talk about ways they could combat tyranny. A small group of them decided that they were going to kidnap and kill a Vegas cop. Little did they know that an undercover officer was already embedded inside their delusional sovereign group. Eventually, the SWAT team arrested two of the sovereign citizens, David Allen Bruschi and Devin Newman. But surprisingly, Rick Van Thiel was not arrested. Rick Van Thiel's brushing with the law dates back to 1992. According to court documents, he was convicted and sentenced to six years in prison for robbery, burglary, and assault. He was released early, but then was arrested the following year, again for violating his parole. Then in 2007, he was charged with murder, assault, and battery with a deadly weapon. Those charges were dismissed when he pled guilty to a lesser charge of attempted battery. It's no wonder he's a sovereign citizen. Can you imagine how annoying it must be to get arrested every time you break the law? What was his education like? From my recollection, I believe he had about a sixth grade education. Wow. But from what I could tell, he seemed like a pretty savvy, sharp guy. You know, like he was a, a very street smart. Very street smart, well-spoken, obviously very convincing. The reason why he would not want to stay in school was not because he didn't have the intellect. I think it was his clashes with authority figures, which is going to be a theme throughout not only this entire case, but I think throughout Rick's life. So I, I, I can imagine that slowly you start learning more about him. And I can only imagine that that was shocking for you because he was not only this homeopathic, quote unquote, doctor, but he also had other hobbies and other past experiences. He thought of himself as a Renaissance man. He was an inventor. He was a sovereign citizen, this philosopher, you know, leader. He was an amateur porn star. Yes, when Rick Van Thiel wasn't busy leading a sovereign citizens group or performing surgery in the nude, he somehow managed to find time to star in several porn films. And I say porn slowly because sometimes when I say porn, people hear foreign. Or when I'm saying foreign film, people think I'm saying porn. It's very confusing. But he was a porn star and he went by the name Rick Spindall. Some of his most memorable films include Reality Porn Triple X Volume 14, Horny Over 40 Volume 45, and Amateur Anal Attempts 14, just to name a few. And this is why no one should ever judge me by my search history. I look up some really nasty stuff, not just for me, but so that you don't have to. So I contacted one of Rick Mantheo's porn directors. He goes by the name of GB to see if maybe I could learn a little bit more about Rick. I learned about you while doing research on a, on, a, on a person that I'm reporting on. And do you remember Rick Van Thiel? Yeah, <laughs> I think so. Yeah, this is the guy who did some metal work and that kind of thing. He, he, he's a nudist, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's definitely into that. and uh, he's, he's definitely, uh, yeah, he's, uh, he's the oddball there. There's no doubt about it. <laughs> 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 yeah, okay, go that, ahead. That's pretty uh, funny. I mean, what, what, what are you doing on, on Rick? I mean, what, what's the deal? What, well, actually, that... What's your that, fascination with Rick? <laughs> well, that's funny, okay, because I thought maybe the moment I said Rick Van Thiel that you would understand why I'm calling you. So, you know, I, as I say, I, you know, I, I do remember, I mean, he's, he's difficult to, uh, it would be difficult to forget. Uh, don't get me wrong, I'm 
liberal, very liberal guy. But that's funny um, because this is this conversation is not going any anything like I imagined it would. <laughs> because yeah, you know okay. you're you're in the entertainment industry, right? And and for you, Rick Van Thiel seems like he's he was far out there, right? Well, yeah, I mean, uh, very talented guy with uh, metal and, and that kind of thing. I mean, uh, you know, he had a machine shop. The porn director, GB, explained that when he opened up his studio back in 2007, he needed to install a lighting grid to hang the lights for the film sets. And he heard about this metal worker in town called Rick Van Thiel, so he hired him. He would, uh, yeah, he, he he would work in the nude, uh, what do you call it, at his machine shop, okay? Imagine oh, wow. having a machine shop and, you know. That and seems dangerous. Naked, naked as he could be, yeah. I wouldn't work in a machine shop wearing a tie, nevertheless naked. Rick Van Thiel had ambition. He didn't want to just hang lights in a porn studio. He wanted to be a star. Of course, again, he was a nudist, but uh, also he wanted to have sex with the girls, okay, and love the camera. He's uh, just a big-time nudist, and well, a likable guy with personality. I like him, but as I say, he was, you know, <laughs> uh, he, uh, he was out there. Okay? Yeah, yeah, I, apparently. He would show up to our studio. I mean, first thing he did was take, take off all of his clothes, okay? I mean, as I say, he is one strange guy. But but is that common? Because I've never been on a porn set. Oh, I, I, common? What do you mean? I mean, no. I mean, dude, oh yeah, as I say, I I work in, <laughs> in the in the business, shall we say? And uh, no, that's uh, <laughs> even for the girls, never mind. So typically on set, you'd be fully dressed until it was your scene, right? I, I will tell you. A story that I, I think to be true, it was told to me uh, about okay. him. Okay. He was arrested for something, and I, I don't know what, okay? And they took him to jail, all right? And they put a bunch of people in there, a bunch of men, all right? And he gets there, and true to form with Rick, he literally takes off all of his clothes, Okay. In prison, in jail, right? In jail. Now, you think, I mean, these are tough guys, you know, whatever, okay? That might be very problematic, okay? The guards don't know what to think of him. But what's funny is the prisoners don't either, okay? And the way the story went is it's Rick on one side of the jail, okay? Everybody else in a group on the other side, Okay. But he might not be the old guy you really want to hang around. <laughs> he sounds very charismatic, very convincing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. As I say, uh, he, well, is, like I told you, he had personality. Uh, but uh, as I say, you know, if you're around him, but, you know, more than 20 minutes, the next thing you know, he's naked. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> and I think that for most people is going to be a problem. <laughs> when we come back, we're going to hear how Rick Van Thiel's medical practice came to a dramatic end. We talked about Rick Van Thiel's porn career, and I can imagine that that was fun work, but very unfulfilling, you know? He wanted to do something meaningful with his life. He wanted to help people feel better. Remember, above all, Rick Van Thiel is a natural man, a king of one, a sovereign citizen. So he turned his rage against the government and focused it on the blood-sucking medical industry. You see, Sovereign citizens need medical care, too, but they can't just trust mainstream doctors. After all, they're the ones poisoning us and injecting microchips into our bodies. Former FBI agent Brianna Fox says that he didn't just start performing open-heart surgeries. At first, he started small. She tells me that he would hang out at natural and organic grocery stores like Whole Foods and Sprouts. And so when he's at these grocery stores, what's his tactic? What's his approach? Because you, you don't just show up to the grocery store and, and recruit people. What was he trying to do? So from the people that we interviewed, they told us that when they would be looking at maybe like 
medicine or health foods for a certain thing, he would walk over to them and say, you know, that's garbage. You, you're going to be wasting your money. That's not going to help. I'll tell you what will really help blood oxygenation or his other services that he would offer. After his little sales pitch, he would hand them a business card and he told them to check out his website and YouTube videos. I would imagine that most of the time he got funny stares, but some of these folks actually took him up on his offer and became quote unquote patients. But he also had his whole sovereign citizen group. And that was a whole different pitch because with them, it was like, oh, you don't want to go see their doctor. Right. You want to come see me. I'm one of us. So that was a slightly different pitch. And then the third group of people that he went to go uh, solicit were people that were, I guess, you know, very vulnerable. These were women who were involved in the sex trade, drug users, people that were homeless, uninsured. And actually, they were all uninsured. The selling point was pretty convincing. If you don't have insurance, these doctors will charge you thousands of dollars, but not Rick Van Thiel. He's only going to charge you 60 bucks. And Rick Van Thiel claimed to practice all kinds of medicine. He can cure migraines, he can cure cancer, he can cure HIV, and people desperate to stay alive gave it a shot. And what's Rick Van Thiel's cure for everything? Well, it's called ozone therapy. But some not-so-crazy people actually believe that ozone treatments can actually increase the body's ability to destroy disease-causing cells. But believing something works and it actually working are two different things. Studies have shown that ozone therapy has zero benefits. In fact, in 2019, the FDA warned that ozone therapy is actually dangerous and shouldn't be used for medical use. So tell me about this ozone therapy treatment that he would do on people. Like that was his thing, right? Like that was what he was known for. That was his solution for AIDS, cancer, the whole nine yards. Yeah. So that was a big part of his pitch. He would tell people when they were standing at the store, hey, don't buy those vitamins, do this ozone treatment. The key things about this are he would tell people it would cure everything from headaches, migraines, skin conditions to AIDS, cancer. And there is clearly no evidence to support this. So what is ozone anyway? Isn't that the stuff up in the atmosphere that protects us from the sun's harmful radiation? Yes, but there's also this man-made ozone, which is essentially the same gas. If inhaled, it could irritate your throat and lungs. So why would anyone take this stuff? Well, in theory, ozone can be a potent disinfectant. However, in practice, it can be really, really dangerous. And the risks of taking ozone increases a hundredfold if the person giving you this treatment is a quack. Rick Van Thiel somehow got his grubby little hands on this ozone machine. He would ask patients to lay down on a table in his trailer, draw blood out of their veins, and run it through this machine. And the device would expose the blood to ozone and then re-inject it back into the patient. So if you can imagine something like an IV drip where it's going into your body, but that would be their own oxygenated blood, but out of the other arm, their blood is getting taken out. And... I would imagine that he, just looking at his trailer, that he wasn't taking the, the most precautions, uh, cleaning the equipment, and because you're dealing with people's blood. Absolutely. Very hazardous substances for anyone to handle, let alone somebody who's handling it in a dirty, I mean, filthy trailer that he did not clean his instruments, uh, would reuse not only the needles and tubes on different people, he'd also circulate their blood through his ozone machine over and over and over. So one person and the next and the next. You have to remember, many of these people coming to see Rick Van Thiel sometimes have transmissible diseases like HIV. So when one person would have their blood go through it, the next person potentially was exposed to everything the previous person had. And... The thing to know, too, is Rick would run the blood oxygenation machine for himself, too. So a lot of the stuff that was going around that other people had, he was running through his own blood. Rick Van Thiel didn't just offer miracle cures. He also practiced sovereign abortions. What does that mean? Here's Terry Kearns, retired FBI agent 
who you heard from in the last episode. But because he was a sovereign citizen, he started advertising to that group and advertised his sovereign abortions. So if he was performing the abortions, there would be no record of any birth or, or abortion. So the government couldn't get a straw man. So that's what he meant as by a sovereign abortion, because I had never seen that term before. Uh, Rick Van Thiel started using it. Brianna Fox, the other FBI agent who worked this case, describes a time when a young girl visited Rick Van Thiel's trailer to get an abortion. This is the part of the story that's pretty tough to hear. So if this topic is a little too much for you, skip ahead a couple minutes. Part of the sovereign citizen movement is not giving birth in a hospital, because when that happens, then the person, the new baby is on the record. They get a social security number, the government knows about them. So obviously for a sovereign citizen, the best thing would be to give birth to a child and not have the government know about it. So Rick, being part of the sovereign citizen community, would offer this service, literally deliver babies uh, in this trailer. But the other thing that he would do is basically do abortions in this trailer as well. And thinking about his clientele, some of which were sex workers, very poor, they may not even have enough money to be able to go to Planned Parenthood or another abortion clinic where it costs $300. Rick would do it sometimes for 40 bucks or even in trade for sex act. Let's say if that person wanted to do a sex act on film as part of his amateur pornography business, that would be one way they could pay him. Uh, Another one would be, he would just say, I'll do it for cheap, but he essentially would say, you have to be naked, I'm gonna be naked. Or he would do other types of things while he was performing the medical procedure that ultimately met the elements of assault. So this case of this young girl who got pregnant and wanted to have an abortion, went to go see him. What what happened to her? Yeah, she went to go see Rick. She was very desperate. She was very young and did not have any other available avenues in her mind. Uh, and when she went to see him, he specifically said that he had to you know, take her clothes off and she agreed that he couched somewhere under the medical necessity, like it was easier to do it if she was naked. And without getting into too much of the details, but he basically said that while he was performing the abortion, he had to do clitoral stimulation because her orgasming would help to get rid of everything that was in there. So she did not want that. She felt extremely uncomfortable. She, in fact, actually said to him, I don't think I want that. I don't believe this is necessary. He basically overruled her and said, it absolutely is. And if you don't do this, I can't guarantee you it's going to work. I, she was just traumatized. Yeah. So she contracted HIV somehow and 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 died. But it's such a terrible story. The parents, they would bring in children to perform whatever various medical procedures There were times where a parent would already have seen Rick and bring their child in to see him for a host of different treatments. There were times that I believe they even had parents bringing a child in for an abortion. So he had this way. It's so easy for us sitting here listening to this to imagine who would ever do that. Why would you ever do that? And if you get to see the pictures of the trailer, it just even makes it that much more intense. Why would anybody walk in there and even stay, let alone let them perform a medical procedure? But Rick was so conning and manipulative, so persuasive. He had this aura about him where he just made it feel to people like, if you don't listen to me, bad things are gonna happen to you or I'm the only person who can save you, or I'm going to do better than this other person you're going to pay a lot more money for. I don't need a fancy office like those other doctors you go to. So he had a very specific narrative that actually seemed to be very compelling when he used it specifically on these people that were running out of hope, that were very vulnerable and didn't have a lot of money. Yeah, one of, one of his victims, Randy Valenzuela, was a an AIDS patient. He was running out of options and he he sought Rick Van Thiel's help and he 
used at ozone therapy. Maybe somebody else who did not have HIV or AIDS probably used the same machine, right? Exactly. Randy was seeing a doctor. It was pretty advanced stages when he was going to see a doctor and get treatment. He had improved a bit, but then had uh, backslid. And so he's very upset about this. Understandably, he thinks he's going to die. And then you have this person coming to you, selling hope, telling you, I'm going to cure this. And when he originally went to see Rick, he had felt a little better at first. But a lot of that, remember, is it could be mental. It's the placebo effect. It could be the fact that he had been weaning off of these antiviral drugs. And so he's doing the ozone therapy. But unfortunately, it's not a cure. It's certainly not a cure for AIDS or cancer. It doesn't last. And just as quickly as he was feeling better, he immediately slid to being way worse and quickly died. And lots of people probably died, I would imagine. According to the FBI, three people have died who were known patients of Rick Van Thiel. All right, this guy needs to be shut down. Clearly, practicing medicine without a license is illegal. But what other laws was Rick Van Thiel violating? Before making the arrest, the FBI and the Las Vegas Joint Terrorism Task Force had to conduct a thorough investigation. Here's retired FBI agent Terry Kearns, who oversaw this particular case. A lot of sovereign citizens are also people who didn't have insurance. A, I didn't trust the government. I don't want to go to anyone or I don't have insurance. Because we looked at charges for him for practicing medicine without a license to see if he was trying to bill any insurance. And he was not. So we couldn't go after him for, for falsely billing insurances. He would either accept payment or he would barter. Well, you provide this service for me and I'll, I'll do this, this for you. They didn't have insurance, so they could work out a payment plan or barter services with Rick Van Thiel. For example, he did a circumcision on one gentleman for a gun. So you tried to get him for insurance fraud. That didn't work. What, what else did you try? Well, we looked at the practicing medicine without a license. And again, that's not a federal uh, offense. They didn't have anything to nail this guy with. The Joint Terrorism Task Force needed more. So they started doing surveillance of the property where he practiced. Brianna Fox and Terry Kearns both described this property with lots of trash and cars everywhere, almost like a junkyard. And towards the back of this property, that's where Rick Van Thiel's trailer was located. I actually looked up the address and I did a street view. And I mean, you guys did a great job of describing it, but it wasn't until I saw it myself that I realized, because I was I was picturing a junkyard, almost like mm -hmm. just abandoned cars and stuff like that. And it was that, but it was worse. Yeah. And then the one thing I didn't expect was that it was in a neighborhood. Just, it looked like a normal yeah. neighborhood. And in the front of the house, it had a tower with cameras on it. A boom so, tower, yeah. So when you pull up to the street, there was it was all fenced in. You have the gate across the driveway, and then you see this big boom tower with cameras on it. That's before you even get to all the kind of junkyard type. It was on a property in a part of Las Vegas that was an older neighborhood. The whole place is, is just a junkyard, but Rick Van Thiel's actual trailer was deep in the back. And what was your reaction when you first saw that trailer? horrified. I knew he was living in a trailer. We had heard descriptions from a couple of the victims or witnesses. But until you saw it, you really couldn't fully grasp the and I had described it kind of like the movie saw you walked in and there was it was just like a horror scene, almost like something you would expect if you walked into a made up uh, haunted house type of thing with all of this stuff around and just dirty. Why would anybody like after seeing yeah. that trailer, why would anybody even continue stepping in? To that? Well, and it's interesting as you talk to some of the, the people who went to see him, 
They talk about their uneasiness pulling up to the property and then they're let in and they go back and it's just, you know, a couple of trailers, the back of a semi truck, junk all over the place. And as they go deeper into the property, as you described, it was kind of long and you'd go the driveway behind beside the house, go to the back of the house was where the trailers were and their uneasiness just kept building and building. But you know, it with patients that were HIV or cancer patients, he, he told them, I can cure this. So I think that that last little thread of hope that this is somebody who says they can cure it, nothing else has worked. So I'm going to try it. And this guy was had to be that convincing. Yeah. Say, I'm going to I'm well, going to perform this in the nude and then I'm going to violate <laughs> you. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Well, and the other part, you know, we talked about the sovereign citizen movement, and I think often of of cults or some of the serial murders, they're actually fairly charismatic people and and can kind of lead people down that way. They get to know them and we use things to lure them in. And I guess you could describe Rick Van Thiel that way. He knew this was the last hope. I can offer you hope. I know you don't have insurance. I can do this procedure for you. Don't worry about the payment if you can't pay me now or barter, you know. Some of the victims that we talked to or witnesses, they would say I was uncomfortable, but then and at the point where I'm there, the procedure is started. What do you do? Jump up. And, and these are often, you know, disenfranchised members of disenfranchised groups. So the task force didn't have enough to arrest him right then and there, but they did have enough evidence to ask a judge to sign off on a search warrant. But the day of the search warrant, describe what was going through your mind that day. So when you arrive at the property, there's this gate that makes it feel very compound-ish. Because we had this knowledge and fear of intending to harm law enforcement, the owner of the property and Rick do not believe in the authority of the federal government. So when the federal government is there saying, we believe that you're committing crimes, which in their mind are laws that shouldn't exist, they're thinking you're overstepping your bounds and coming on yeah. property. We're not going to allow that. And, and a, a exactly what you're doing is their biggest fear, the government coming in. And, and this is the day they've been waiting for, right? It was immediately out of the gate. We're calling SWAT to go there to be able to execute the search warrant. Literally throwing flashbang grenades. After they cleared the scene, Agent Fox and the rest of the task force entered the property. I can't even express to you, walking into that trailer, this compound was just riddled with debris and garbage, um, like old bicycles and cars. But when you walked into that trailer, were you expecting that? When you walked into the trailer, there were literally sex toys hanging from the ceiling with scalpels and IV bags and needles laying around. It, it was honestly something out of a movie. And you couldn't believe when you walked in that anybody would look at that and think, I I'm going to stay. Right, and exactly. I had done several search warrants before on heroin houses and really nasty places. But this was like, I literally threw away my clothes. When we went there or the, for the search warrant, we found that Rick was actually keeping very good notes and like a list of patients that he saw. It would almost be like a form you would fill out when you go to the doctor's office. What's your name, address, birth date? Uh, what are you here for? What you know procedures are you seeking? They found a ledger with hundreds of so-called patients. Inside this filthy trailer, littered with dildos and sex toys and papers and dirty dishes, was a treasure trove of evidence. Investigators seized computers and hard drives. They also collected black market steroids, about 10 vials of blood thinners, and IV bags filled with blood. And so you do the search warrant. How, how quickly did the, the case move at that point? When did you make the arrest? Actually, it took a while, again, because we had to go out and interview hundreds of victims. First, find the victims. And by the way, many of them were sovereign citizens. So that was my first time ever being spit on, 
threatens, literally people saying they were going to kick us off the property. So they did not want anything to do with us. Even when we told them you were ex- potentially exposed to these diseases that you should go see the public health department to try to get treatments for them. Nope. Didn't want anything to do with it. So there were people that were yelling at us saying, why are you prosecuting Rick Van Thiel? But then there were other people that were just so hard to find when we found them. It was just so traumatizing for them to talk about this. And sometimes they were just so embarrassed for the exact reason they felt I shouldn't have done it. And they don't know why they did. And now they felt like if they got HIV, now they're they're doomed. I can't imagine because usually when you approach a victim, it's not a hostile situation. But every time you went and knocked on a door, it must have been terrifying. I also had a very hard time contacting victims. Some of his victims were homeless or sex workers who don't have physical addresses. Other victims were fellow sovereign citizens who don't want to be found. I was able to talk to one of the victims, but she declined to be part of this podcast. And I completely understand that. After the raid of his trailer and weeks of investigating, the authorities were ready to make the arrest. Luckily, Rick Van Thiel was arrested without any commotion. He was ultimately charged with 21 counts related to practicing medicine without a license, eight counts of sexual assault, and one count of child abuse. They also charged him with a felony in possession of a firearm, but the gun charges were eventually dropped. Brianna Fox still remembers the day of the arrest. Rick was his normal self. I remember he was sitting in the back seat with me. So they're sitting in the front seat, and I'm sitting in the back with Rick. We had handcuffed him. He was in the back seat. We put the seat belt on top of him, and then you kind of put it through the handcuffs. So he's kind of facing me, and he says, I'm going to throw up. And I just looked over at him because I'm thinking, oh, my goodness, the biohazard. If he threw up knowing all the things that he's been exposed to and probably has flowing through his system. So I was like, okay, stop the car immediately. And so we stopped and that was very dangerous, right? Because you obviously, we, yeah, we're scared. Is he going to try to flee? Is he going to try to pull something on us? But it was just such a health risk, literally, that if he threw up on us, uh, we would all be potentially exposed to a lot oh, of bad things. Yuck. And so you're, you're sitting in the back seat with him. Did you talk at all or are you guys quiet? Do you have any kind of conversations? Rick seemed to open up with me. I think that there was something about me being female, uh, smaller in stature. I think I came off as maybe like he thought I would be a good mark or he thought he could manipulate me. So he would often try to talk to me and even say things like, oh, I I can fix that skin issue. You know, like literally trying to sell me. And I'm like, dude, I've just been working your case for the past eight months. Like I wouldn't let you touch me with a 10 foot pole. <laughs> so It almost reminded me of Hannibal Lecter and Clarice, that relationship that he was trying to form with you, which is so odd. Was that your only type of intimate moments with him, like sitting in the car? Did you have other interactions with him? Yeah, there are a few different interactions we had. One was actually we had to get the DNA from him. We wanted to run his blood to see if he had all of these different transmissible diseases. They asked me to do the buccal swab. So, you know, it's just a long cotton swab. Uh, You put it in his mouth and I was the only person he would let do it. He literally said he was going to bite the other people and he was going to fight and struggle. So he let me. But meanwhile, as I was doing it, he was saying, Agent Fox, are you putting bugs in my head? Are you putting a tracker in me? And it was funny because I said, no, obviously I wasn't. But (laughs) that was enough to pacify him. Even in jail, Rick Van Thiel never quit giving people medical advice. While he was in the county jail awaiting his trial, he started at recruiting people to try to do this while he was in jail on them. So he just never gave up. They come to me because I can do things that the regular MDs can't do. And in court, he pulled out every sovereign citizen trope you can think of. He always would say he was going to beat the charges. And then it was such a circus at his initial appearance before a judge. This is before a federal judge. 
And for most people, they'd be shaking in their boots. Have I done anything here worth killing me over? He refused to even answer to the judge. He wanted the judge to call him by his sovereign citizen name. Like he just would not do any of it. But at the same time, it just irritated the judge. It actually irritated his public defender. Like, (laughs) you're not making this any easier on us. He wanted to represent himself too, right? He was very unhappy that he even had to have that public defender assigned to him. He wanted to speak for himself. He wanted to represent himself, of course, with zero legal training. Here's former TV reporter Sergio Avila. He was the only one who understood his position to be able to defend himself. I remember distinctly his arraignment where essentially the judge just reads the charges against you uh, and make sure that you make sure that you understand them. And he claimed before the court that he was not Rick Van Thiel. The whole courtroom just kind of, huh? Wait, wait, what? And he starts saying that he, he is the, the being, independent being known as capital R, lowercase i, C-K. Then shortly after, he said that he was likely not going to survive uh, because he couldn't perform his own treatments. If you leave me in here until December, I'm not I'm not going to be here in December. He was treating himself with ozone therapy or whatever it may have been that he was doing. And so he said he may not survive until through his trial because he was missing out on those treatments. But he never did make it to trial, did he? We got a notification that Rick had hung himself. He killed himself while he was awaiting trial. He hung himself. You know, they found him dead in his cell. It wasn't his ailment that killed him. I remember seeing the headline that he had killed himself and and I was surprised. I was like, wow. I just felt like somebody with his attitude, the way that I remember him being, just telling me what was up. I wouldn't imagine somebody like that taking their life. When he realized, I think the severity of the charges he was facing, that what it was like for him and what his future was going to be like, I think that was too much. He couldn't take it. And rather than lose in court where he felt like his dignity was going to be lost, he ultimately decided he was going to make his own ending and decided to kill himself. I bet it was very disappointing for you guys since you worked so hard on this case to see it end this way, right? Very anticlimactic in a way. So you put so much energy and effort and trying to make sure that there's justice served. And then that was Rick's last way of trying to, you know, stick it to the man, I think. Rick just had an extreme problem with authority, did not like being told what to do, didn't like rules, and then obviously was trying to use the sovereign citizen movement as his loophole on why he didn't have to follow any rules and why everything he was doing was completely allowed and legitimate in his mind. All right, guys, thank you for bearing with that. That was a tough episode. This is usually the part of the episode where I say, next time on Pretend. But I actually don't know what you're going to listen to in the next episode because I have several episodes that I would like to play, but I just don't know which one's going to play first and I can't make up my mind. I guess we'll find out sooner or later. But I do want to take a moment to thank my new Patreon supporters, Michelle and Michael Vukovic. Michael is a new Patreon supporter who has chosen to be a co-host with me on a future YouTube or Patreon episode. So Michael, I will be in touch. If you want to co-host a Patreon or a YouTube video with me, go to pretendradio.org and click the donate button. I have a new tier where you too can host a show with me. I've only done one of these and it was a success. So I can't wait to hear what Michael has to say about whichever con artist we end up choosing. Oh, oh, one more thing. One more thing before I go. Recently on Twitter and Facebook, I asked my audience, what do you think about hypnosis? Is it real? Is it fake? Have you ever undergone a hypnosis session? Well, I got a lot of interesting responses, but I I thought I'd ask you 
If you have an interesting take on hypnosis, your story could make it on the show. I'm planning on doing a, a whole series on hypnosis later on in the season. So if you have a story to share about hypnosis, email me a voice memo with your story at my email, Javier at pretend.org. I'll have my email address in the show notes. All right, that's all I have for now. Let's see what I air next time. Created by.